graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. I'm not a racist, that's what's so insane about this. I'm not a racist, that's what's so insane about this. He's black, isn't he? I'm black. I'm not a racist. That was the worst part you've ever seen. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. And I never meant to start a war. All I wanted was to let you in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I think one of our, our earlier episodes, when I say earlier episodes, I think right around the time you, you, you started being the, the new co-host of the podcast, it was right around the time Miley Cyrus had went in, you know, into her, her new phase of her career where she was being all slutty and fucking wrecking balls. Um and so right before, right, I mean, literally probably about three minutes before we actually started recording, you were playing the uh, the Anne Hathaway version of, well, not, she wasn't singing it, but Anne Hathaway lip syncing to Wrecking Ball. And I got a chance, I saw some highlights, I didn't watch the whole video, but it was her, uh, like she's swinging on a Wrecking Ball and she's, like she's, like she's, she's full on doing like pretty much everything that's going on in the video. Except for licking a uh, a sledgehammer. Oh no no no! She did that in the video too. Oh, she did do it. Yes, yeah, oh, she okay. did. Oh, okay. So I must have missed that. So, and I gotta say, is um, Anne Hathaway such a dirty little girl? I, she'd get it so good. I mean, it's just uh, she uh, she was in a movie, and I, I fucking forget the name of it. It's not. It wasn't called Traffic. It was something to that effect. You know, because you know, I mean, she was known from like the Princess Diaries and all that shit. Um, you know, I guess she finally got her big break, and you know, well, I mean, the Princess Diaries were were she got a big break, but I mean, like when she kind of grew up, uh, she was big in uh, the Devil Wears Prada. I mean, of course, nerds like us know her from uh, you know, Dark Knight, the Dark Knight Rises, where she played Selena Kyle, aka Catwoman, who which I think she was perfect for. But she's a dirty little girl. Like she wants she wants to get fucked hard, and and um, oh my god. <laughs> No, Chris, it's you want to get fucked hard, and Welcome anything that looks good to you right now, <laughs> you're going to fuck. Welcome to the podcast, new listeners. <laughs> By the way, goodbye to the podcast, new listeners. <laughs> <laughs> and and let me tell you, you guys, uh, you know, and I, I do, you know, it's so funny when people like on Twitter and stuff like that, they always focus on negative comments. I do want to focus on, I do want to say thank you. For everybody that's been uh, following us on Twitter and and commenting on the podcast and following the podcast, um, I you know it's so fun when you get feedback from episode and it's sort of weird because like obviously not everyone listens to the podcast like the day we the day it's released but like two three days later someone will will, will bring up something for the podcast and it's it, it definitely brightens up my day it's it's definitely and it's it's nice to know people are watching and it's funny that uh, the the episode that we did I believe the episode was called Grand Theft Miley. Uh, uh, the episode that we did where like the the artwork that I did for the episode was the one where Miley Cyrus is like licking the the sledgehammer. Um, that is one of our, if I'm not mistaken, that is our highest, like our most downloaded show. Um, but uh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was me pulling my oh, pants down. Continue. Well, no, I know I do. I do want to give a, a huge thank you to everybody that uh, that listens to the show and the people who comment with us. And and you know, I, I you know, I've been he's sucking up to all of you. No, well, I mean, I mean, I'm <laughs> sucking up, but obviously, people, you know, if you're cool enough to listen to this podcast, I mean, you know, I've I've actually become like Facebook friends with people who were casual listeners and and you know, sort of interacting with them. So um, yeah, I know I've been starting to let people come onto my Facebook. I'm like sitting there going. I have no idea who the fuck you are. Oh, I listen to Two Strangers One podcast. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and All right. <laughs> and and I, I just I want to you know usually you know I always start off like you know 
it, it's not even though my life isn't all fucking doom and gloom and stuff like that but i do want to thank everyone who listens to the podcast um it's been fucking it's so i i love recording i look forward to recording this is my therapy um you know fuck saving you know so i'm gonna save some money from the government so i don't have to pay for have medicaid pay for my fucking psychological uh, therapy <laughs> we do the podcast but then like you guys because paul had made a comment about uh if if you had a dollar for every time I said fuck on the podcast, and uh, and and I realized that everyone you know, and I know I stutter a lot. I know I say you know a lot. I know I curse a lot. And, and you guys are giving me a complex. I'm like I don't know. Should I? I gotta really start listening on how I talk and how I and when I stutter and stammer and and say fuck all the time. But, yeah, shut up. <laughs> but fuck it, I'm gonna do what I want to do. So take a drink if you are if you are taking a shot every time. I say the word fuck. Um, you're gonna, Drink. <laughs> you're gonna die of alcohol poisoning. Okay, so first of all, any time that Chris says fuck, you can you drink, and any time that I say basically, you drink. <laughs> and it's just if I mean, obviously, like if we're saying it now, this is sort of like intentional. So I, I don't think these really count. You have to wait to where where our mind isn't set on like how we're talking, but when we're deep, deep, deep into a subject, uh, and you hear us say fuck or basically or if I stutter and I go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, when I go like that, then take a drink. And it is funny, like sometimes we do have because what I do is uh, when I edit the podcast, and I don't when I say edit, that's kind of a, a misnomer because I very I rarely edit unless something like unless we literally do have technical difficulties, um, unless like literally like you know one of us says, look, I have to go take a piss or something, I'll be right back. Um, I I hardly edit the podcast, but I do do this thing called truncate silence, and what it's it's a deal where it takes any expanded period of time that is silent and kind of compresses it and it's so funny when i truncate silence some of the episodes like it'll literally take like five minutes off and i'm like holy shit <laughs> there was a lot of silence in this episode but i guess i mean what i like it that's why if you've noticed in the past i would say the past like 10 episodes if it does sound like we're kind of like rapid talking right after each other's because I, I and i like you know i'm gonna shorten the episodes as much as i can so you know i understand you know, to expect people to listen to an hour and a half of fucking podcasts. I mean, people, there are people like myself where, you know, I have I have a bunch of podcasts that I listen to on a weekly basis and I'm glad they're weekly and, and I will I will listen, 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 listen. You know, but, it, you know, those ones are the ones that, you know, I've I've have grown a special place in my heart and I hope that our podcast has grown a special place in your heart. And, uh, you know, I want to shorten it as much as I can. So I don't I don't want to expect people to have to listen to an hour and a half show every week. Um, and of course, you know, we could also just not talk about the same bullshit we talk about all the time. <laughs> but Or put you into uh, tangents. Yeah, to shooting way off, way off into tangent. So I thought that was pretty funny, you know, from the last episode. Uh, but I do want to thank everybody. You know, I definitely don't want to uh, be negative or anything. Like I said, when I try to, you know, when I'm when I'm being negative, um, you know, just understand that I'm just kind of just expressing myself. I'm, I'm you know, it's, it's better I get it out here than fucking, you know, walking into a fucking public place with a fucking heavy assault rifle and taking people's lives. You're saving lives when you listen to this podcast is what I'm saying. Um, so let's go into the depressing part of the news. So the first part of the show, we usually talk about. Uh, kind of everyday stuff, stuff that's in the news, stuff about our lives. Luckily, I guess for me, things like things in my life right now. I mean, nothing's changed. Not that that's a good thing. It's definitely not a bad thing. Um, you know, uh, I'm switching my schedule soon. Uh, not schedule, but um, the store that I work at's doing a remodel. So, um, they oh, need, isn't that special? So they they need someone to work overnights. So you know, for someone like me who you know, I, I'm constantly complaining about my job and hating the customers. What better than working overnights where, you know, I don't mind working. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a lazy person. But uh, to, to, to basically no, no, work working overnight, I, working overnight is fine in the hood. You know, you might have some random people going, hey, can I come in and get a beer? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the door. Can I come in and get beer? The door is locked. Um, you know, That's what you think. <laughs> I mean, it it should be locked if it's not locked. It'd be kind of funny when the construction <laughs> worker's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go outside and have a smoke." Walks outside, he's got a gun in his face. Yeah, well, I mean. That's that's going to be interesting. But usually, like, construction guys, especially here in Rochester, construction guys come from the white, trashy parts of Rochester. I mean, no, <laughs> I, I've been noticing a lot of it's it's really weird because a lot of companies have been uh, contracting out to people outside of New York State. And it's kind of like fucked up because there's a lot of construction projects here that local people could be doing. And, you know, maybe maybe a lot of the projects are being taken. And they have to pull from out of state, but 
Uh, I'm just saying is no, but but I mean because like when my store, you know, and I don't want to give out the name of my store because I don't want to get fired. Uh, but but like when my store has people that come and take care of stuff. Uh, no, that's what I'm saying. It's not local people. I mean, my store is in the hood. Um, the guys who do the construction are very rednecky. You know, it's funny. Like you could tell. Like in my store, you know, uh, like I said, my store is in the hood. And I had a girl. I had a girl a while back say, "Oh, how come you only follow the black people?" And I'm like, well, you know, and I didn't say this to her, but I mean, logistically, only black people shop at my store. <laughs> you, know you know, you know, there are Very no, true. there, there is no, uh, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, it's not exclusively a black people. I mean, but you know, let's be realistic. But I mean, for the most part, I live in a, in, I mean, I work in a, in a poor black area. So yeah, the people that I do follow happen to be black. It's not like I'm, I'm pointing people out if, if if a fucking white person came in that looked super duper suspicious i'd be following them also but uh but i digress so when the guys come to the store when like i said when, when the construction guys come to the store or guys who come in like we have guys that fix you know we have a cooler sometimes the cooler has an issue that needs to be taken care of we have guys that have to take care of stuff on the roof plumbers and stuff like that these guys are good old boys i mean you know where you know and they have the big you know the ones that i mean not not like like white trash red oh, so, so what you're the, saying is they're mexican okay <laughs> no 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 i'm talking about no guys that have like the ford ram f-150 like the big giant pickup truck that has like fucking uh like six wheels on it like it's it's four wheels on one axle you know, like this thing is ready to fucking you know it, it could pull the fucking building behind it if it wanted to uh you know, so you see these guys and, and they're real. And, and it's funny because you can tell when they're working, they're not used to being around black people. So it is kind of funny to watch them react. And then like one, I had one guy like, uh, do I have, I have to, he goes, he, he had made a point where he said something like, you know, usually I don't lock the back of my truck, <laughs> but I am today, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, when I work, like if I, when I'm working those overnights, and, and, and if the guys want to go out and smoke a cigarette, you know, I think they're going to be a little more on point. They're going to be, <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be, they're going to be better than security because you know they're going to be watching out for the themselves and stuff like that. Because they're going to be, in the, if they do go outside for a cigarette, they're going to be in the hood at three o'clock in the morning having a cigarette. So, well, dude, that side of town. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I mean, but if you're a redneck, you know, and I hope I we're talk, I'm probably offending everybody right now. Uh, but if you know, if you're a redneck and you're in the hood at three o'clock in the morning, trust me, you're watching your back. You're 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 looking. You're you're making sure you have a, a place to retreat. <laughs> you probably have a gun rack in their car. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Let one of them try something. But uh, so yeah, so that's um. Well, while we while we are touching upon the very sensitive nature of. Uh, race relations. Uh, this is something, unfortunately, the last episode, I went on so much of a tangent that I didn't even give you a chance to speak about one of the things you wanted to talk about. And I could certainly uh, add on to this. And, you know, right now we're going to get like all deep and political. And, and here we are to, uh, I don't, I mean, I say I'm white. I'm not really white. I'm Puerto Rican. But for the, all intents and purposes, I am white. Uh, two white guys talking about race relations in this country. Um, <laughs> but uh, there was a video. I mean, it was out. It's been out for about two weeks now, and it was it was a guy on a train, a young black guy, who asked, uh, just like middle aged white guy, um, if he could use his phone. And it's a in a in a, in a public situation. Um, I think common sense. I honestly don't think the the guys, you know, the 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 guy whose phone, the guy who owned the phone. I don't think he was being racist. Uh, if you're in any kind of, I, I'm not giving my phone to a stranger. You know, uh, you know whether whether or not it was a young black man or whatever the case may be. I'm, I'm very leery. And I think what had happened was is the guy was already on his phone, which is why the the, the kid went up and asked him for his phone. Um, and it was, you know, uh, so what had happened was is he had asked for the phone, and the guy said, "No, I'm not giving you my phone." Which, uh, you know, uh, common sense. I mean, I know we live in a world, you know, we live in a world where, oh, you shouldn't you shouldn't think like that. You shouldn't think like that. No, fuck you. I'm going to think like that because I don't want my phone taken away from me. And, you know, there are, you know, growing up when I grew up in New York City, there are people who will ask you for something and not give it back. There are people who say, can I use your phone? And they'll take the phone and then not give it back to the person they borrowed it from. And when I say or the person they stole it from. Because uh, it's it, it's because technically 
if you, you know, it, it's sort it's sort of skirting the law. Like, oh, I asked them if I could use it, whatever. Like, you know, or or you know, it, and it's also like you can't say it was taken by force because if you hand somebody a phone, you know, and they refuse to give it back to you, they didn't take it by force. You gave it to them. You know, and and that it gives it. And this is, you know, call me wrong, call me a racist, call me a horrible human being. This is how I see the situation would have played out. The guy would have, let's just say, the guy that had the phone gave it to the young kid, and the kid, and then the guy, you know, the kid finishes making a phone call or whatever, and the guy says, "Give it back." The 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 young kid would have. The kid would have intimidated him. He would have used whatever he needed to use to, to scare the guy into either not asking about it or or just walking away and not giving a fuck. Um, so the guy said no. And then this kid who uses something that's 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 now, especially in the past couple of months, you know, has been such a, a touchy, touchy subject. Uh, he asked him, what do you think about the Michael Brown case? And, you know, Michael Brown was, just, you know, uh, what happened in Ferguson and the riots and everything like that. And the guy and unfortunately, uh, this guy, he should have as soon as someone as soon as a young black man asks a white middle aged man what he thought about Ferguson immediately after asking if he could have his phone or if he could use his phone. Um, this guy should have been he should have been ready for a problem. You know, uh, I don't know. I don't know much about this middle aged white guy as in what was, you know, what's his history and what's his, uh, you know, how, how much street smarts he has. But, you know, uh I mean, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. But he, uh, if if I had been in that situation, that guy should have been ready to run or to fight, um, knowing that you know, because that's that's that was a loaded question, you know, I had nothing to do with the situation. Um, and of course, this this fucking uh, young punk, this prick, this piece of shit decided to use that when the guy goes no i i haven't thought about michael brown and 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 you know and of course you know let's let's be very very real about this why should a middle-aged white guy <laughs> think or know or care about michael brown he goes what do you think of michael brown well i don't think anything about michael brown and then the young punk used this as a uh an excuse to just start punching away at the middle-aged white guy um, you know, and of course it was just, you know, when you, when you watch, cause that, of course that gets, that part gets caught on tape, which nowadays everything gets fucking caught on tape. Uh, you know, everybody, everybody is carrying around, uh, a camera in their pocket. I mean, you know, you could go to a store right now and for like 30 bucks, get the, you know, the cheapest, um, smartphone, you know, they're, they're on sale right now. You could go, I mean, of course it's for a shitty company like net 10 or, <laughs> or something like that, or track phone. But you could buy a $30 Android phone, and now for all intents and purposes, you have a semi-decent camera in your pocket. You know, it's it's funny that, you know, the technology, when we were kids, you know, uh, it blows our mind of, on on how the technology, and I can only imagine what our parents or our grandparents compared to the shit they had. But, you know, everybody was walking around with relatively crystal clear video recording equipment <laughs> in their pockets. It's readily readily available. And it's part of our society. And, you know, you know, within hours, I mean, we see video of this guy just, you know, the young punk kid just wailing on the on the middle aged white guy. And it was and that was it was a fucking vicious, vicious, vicious beating, um, obviously totally uncalled for. You know, even this even if this was a heated political debate. Uh, about Michael Brown, there was no reason for that guy to be beaten up on the old dude uh, the way he did. It, it was sickening. It's disgusting. Uh, it's indicative of much bigger problems in this country. Um, like I said, I mean, I'm not. I don't want to make it a race thing, but you know, they, they, you know, there are people out there who will. T- he's well, taking they- he's taking advantage of a victim. You know, the, you got predator and prey. You know, and he first he 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 basically tried to just ask to steal from this guy. <laughs> you know, and when the guy kind of like the guy. And, 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 you know, the guy didn't put up force. He didn't say anything rude. He didn't say anything mean. He just said no. And then when he asked him, what do you think of Michael Brown? He goes, I don't think I haven't thought about Michael Brown. You know, uh, you know, this young punk kid used it as an excuse uh, to, to, to go to violence. You know, I don't so I don't know if you wanted to say something. Well, you know, I think that, you know, it, it just it really fucking annoys me when these how do I put this dickheads decide that they want to uh be assholes and just beat up on helpless people. Like, for example, fucking, while this guy's getting beaten up, people are sitting there laughing on the train. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing that I talk to Darrell about all the time, because me and him can have an actual good conversation about racism, Mm -hmm. is the fact that it it always, it's not the fact, it's not you, per se. It's the people in your race that are 
creating this negative image of your race. So, for example, white people a while ago in the 90s, we were thought of as these idiots that would jump into a van with bombs in the back of it and run into a building and try to blow it up. Mm-hmm. Okay, you remember that. We had, Timothy you know, McVeigh and shit like Timothy that. McVeigh, you know, all, all white, these crackers taking these, these vans and driving into vehicles. So that's what we were cast as. You know, Muslim people are cast as, oh, they're going to take take over a plane and run into a building or they're going to blow up a bridge or something, you know, they're, they're labeled as terrorists. Um, and you know, black people. And again, this is, we're all being, I'm being equally racist right now. So I don't want to hear, I don't want to get no fucking complaints, but oh, Paul's being racist against black people. I was just being racist against my own race. <laughs> <laughs> so black people, are all these people that are on fucking, you know, welfare that just use the system is what one of the racist things that's out there is about. And, you know, I hate to say this, but if you're that petty that you're going to beat up some guy on the train because, you know, you think it's funny or whatever, I think that's stupid. Well, the guy, know? it was obviously the guy was, the guy he wanted to rob. He wanted to rob the guy's phone from him. You know, right. is that plain and simple? He saw someone that he could take advantage of, try to take his phone from him. You know, he tried the cool, casual approach. You know, like the cool, casual approach of stealing. Hey, can I borrow your phone? When, when all common sense would have said, no, uh, no, I'm not going to lend you my phone because I'm not going to get it back if I lend you my phone. You know, um, right. And 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 you know, this the, the kid saw someone that he could take advantage of. He saw someone, you know, and the fact that you know, and 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 I would think that you know, uh, uh, like you know, if I was a black person, that this guy then all of a sudden brings up the Michael Brown thing, you know, something that is a very very sensitive and very very real, uh, you know, very very telling of today's uh, you know society, whatever, you know, he used that as an excuse to beat up this guy. Mm-hmm. You know, he was looking for that guy. There was no answer that guy could have given. You know, what I'm saying, you know, he, he you know, the, the, this kid who wanted to be a thief, trying to uh, try, you know, and ob- wa- a wannabe thief, a, a, a definite uh, a, assaulter or, or violent offender um, using something that's very serious uh, as as a reason to beat up a stranger because he was trying to steal. From him. You know, like I would be like like. You know, and and of course, you know, there are tons of uh, when you say like every subculture uh, in America, any subculture in the world is defined by its loudest uh, subsection. You know, uh, unfortunately, you know, there 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 are millions and millions well, of good people who, who, me, who go to work and do what they got to do. And then knuckleheads like this get put on the news or, or get put exactly, on video yeah. and, and it gets put and on they're Facebook. The ones, and, it, and, and this shit gets, you know, you know, like you and I, like we live in Rochester, which is a very mixed, mixed uh, neighborhood, you know, uh, mixed city. Uh, you know, when, when videos like that go out to places where, 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 where black people are really a minority, where it's not, you know, like, you know, there's people like, you know, you don't see a black person in real life unless, you know, you leave the town or whatever, you know, that stuff kind of, that sends a very, very bad message to the wrong people who just right. by just by the definition of where they live are not exposed to black people. Well, uh, and they you don't know, see the worst of the worst on TV or on the internet. Well, yeah. see, that's the thing. Like, it, it makes me, it, it it pisses me off for people like Darrell, for example, or um, you know, even like you, for example. You know, it, it just gives people. It gives me, it pisses me off because I have people that are of a different race that are friends that, you know, you get this, people take this image of a black person and portray it onto another person, another person of that same race and say, oh, well, this person is like that. I don't think that of anybody, mm-hmm. but I'm also not stupid. And I, you know, I know if a, if a black person is that trashy black person that is, you know, portrayed in the media. Mm-hmm. And same thing with you know I, I know a trash I know definitely a, a trashy white person that's for sure mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, there's some there's some real trashy white people out there sometimes I want to dump them in the city and be like here survive um, <laughs> I'm just saying is that you know there, there's so many there's so many good people who just you know go do their job go home. Don't bother anybody. Don't want to bother anybody. You know, there's, and, you know, I mean, you know, and there's issues that need to be addressed. But unfortunately, you know, the, the you know, those people, you know, those millions of people go under the radar, you know, but well, one, one knucklehead causes a problem, 
you know, that gets plastered all over the news. Well, look at, look at, um, and I, I'm sure you've seen this on Facebook. Look at that one kid. Um, he was a black kid that, and okay, first of all, before I say this, I don't really want to keep saying black kid or black person or African American, but here's the problem. Most of our crime is caused by black people in this country. It's a, it's a given statistic that is out there. And I, and I need to make that clear. So if you hear me saying this a lot, it is what it is. Unfortunately, the views of Paul Pascrello don't necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't we'll go on, on the fucking lines. Anyways, um, so getting back to what I was saying. So this black kid gets a heart transplant. And, you know, he said, oh, I'm going to turn my life around if I get this heart transplant, blah, blah, blah. Um, this kid a couple weeks back was um, in a police chase, apparently. I believe that's what the story was. And he ran into something and got killed. Um, basically, he had robbed a place just before the, you know he got killed in this police chase, and it, it just it just shows you like it's just like you know the media has been doing two things, and this is why I don't like how the media has become because I think they portray things they they elevate things to a level that doesn't need to be elevated to. So I can understand frustrations of politicians and even even famous people, but um, one of the things, for example, is um, like this whole Ferguson thing. Like, look, I- I'm not saying that. I'm not going to sit here and say that black lives don't matter because that's ignorant and stupid. Black lives matter, just like Asian lives matter, Latino lives matter. Like, you know, white people matter. You know, we all matter in one way or fashion or form. But you know, here's the thing. Sometimes we shouldn't take things to the level that it is. Okay, I'm not saying that the whole Ferguson thing, for example, and I know I'm going around in a circle here, kind of, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, I wouldn't say. Th- I don't know, based on the evidence that I heard and based on the evidence that was presented, especially to the federal government, might I add, that and I don't remember what the police officer's name was, but I don't think he acted um, negatively in this in this situation. I actually think he did his job. Now, there's a there's a recent story of a cop that apparently executed this uh, this guy. Uh, I can't think of what his name is. It's all over too. I got, I, got, I don't know what it, what happened, but we're starting to see footage. One of the the most interesting pieces of footage is this guy gets out of his this guy he pulls this guy over. It's a it's routine traffic stop. Also, he's kind of I guess he's mic'd up too, which is really weird because I I don't necessarily understand that, but. Whatever. The dashboard camera is catching, you know, he does his traffic, you know, he goes back to the car, he's, you can obviously hear him on the computer typing. Mm-hmm. Then the, the driver opens Walter, his door. Walter Scott. Is Walter it? Scott. Okay. I apologize out there. I'm, I'm, you know, there's so many stories out there lately that it's just, you know, they're all meshing together and it's just like, oh my God. But anyways, um, so Walter Scott, he gets out of his vehicle, stands up and then gets back in. I'm sitting there going, oh, no, he's not going to do what I think he's going to do. And I'm sitting there going, well, this could explain why the officer did something. Because I, I, I thought that the officer had just, you know, got out of this car, saw this guy randomly, and just executed him. That's what I thought. Because, you know, the media doesn't really explain themselves sometimes, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, it, in actuality, this guy gets up out of his car and just runs away because apparently he has some warrants also, the car is not in his name or something like that. Whatever. Who knows what the hell is wrong. But the police officer went in pursuit. Now, there's some cell phone video of him, um, I guess, shooting him. But I, I don't know. I never got to see that video, to be honest with you. So I don't know. But apparently, he's been brought up on murder charges. And he's been fired by the police department. So uh, that's going to be an interesting case there. But, you know... Uh, yeah, well, according, uh, not to, according to usatoday.com, it was... He pulled him over for a non-functioning taillight. Right. And then, and then now let's, you know, and not to cut you off. Now, just the, they, they pull him over for a non-working taillight. The guy is driving a Mercedes Benz. Right. When the cop runs his name, it turns out this guy hasn't paid child support in 10 years. So, uh, so we got a guy, okay, the non, okay, the non-working taillight, not, you know, not the hugest thing. You get a ticket and you fucking fix it and ticket goes away in a week. Um, not paying child support for 10 years. That, that is definitely, you know, I hate when people go, oh, he was killed for not paying child support. No, he wasn't killed for not paying child support. When, the cop, when a cop has somebody in a car and, mm-hmm. and, and you're running to play to whatever, and this guy decides to run. Right. Now, now I'm well, just saying is, is, is you're, that there was, had he not run, none of this would have happened. Well, here, and, and here's the other thing, too. Here's the other thing, too, because 
if you see the da- if you see the dashboard video and you you hear what he's saying, he's he hasn't said one racist thing to him. He hasn't done said anything to this guy. But the media is portraying him as like this racist guy that executed him. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, okay, so this guy already is looking bad to this officer. He goes running, dashes out of his car, and runs off. And the and the police officer is in high pursuit. So now the officer's adrenaline is up. Mm-hmm. Um, what happens if, it, I don't know if the cell phone video shows this, but what happens if this guy is reaching for something and the officer thinks it's a gun because he's reaching underneath him and he shoots him because he doesn't want him to do that? Mm-hmm. I could completely understand that. Now, I don't know if it was like 50, I don't know how many shots were fired. I, I'm very, I believe it was eight shots. You know, I mean, my thing is that like, did the officer over respond? Quite possibly. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, let's just say, let's just say he, you know, and of course, you know, the whole deal where it obviously, you know, he's, he's the, the cop after the fact, you know, I mean, let's, you know, if, if the video shows that he's trying to plant the taser gun by the, by the guy's dead body, uh, he, you know, the reason he shot so many times was, was a little much, but why did this happen? It happened because the guy decided to run. Why are you running? Has anybody in the history of fucking ever? Now, of course, you know, we live in a definite, we live in a, in a society where everybody has a camera on their, on their phone and, and lots and tons of video. Has anybody ever gotten away from the police? Is there a video of anyone ever running away from the cops and really getting away? You know, not like especially once the cops have got once the cops have stopped you. I mean, there's people like who have hidden from the police or whatever and, and gotten away, you know, like gotten away with it. But, you know, has anyone in a, in a police car, like a police chase, is, have the cops ever decided to just give up and not st- to stop following this guy? You know, I don't know. You know, once again. This was a situation that had gotten escalated because this guy decided to run. Were, 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 was the the out was the outcome incredibly uh, horrible and 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 it could have been avoided? Yes, but you know what also could have been avoided? Not fucking running, sitting exactly. there getting your fucking ticket, or even if you you know you got arrested or whatever, you know take the fucking ticket and and go home. Or even if or even if you go to jail, well you know what? Maybe you should have paid your that fucking was your child support. Yeah, exactly. You're driving a Mercedes Benz. That Maybe was your fucking problem. deserve to fucking go to jail. Exactly. That was his fucking problem. Now, again, if he used excessive force and, you know, the guy did what he was, what he did, you know, there, throw the key, throw him in jail. Let's just get this guy. But one of my biggest problems, and I think I've said this on, a, on at least one or two podcasts, you know, not all police officers are bad. Not all, you know, n- none, none of our law enforcement officers are bad. And if and the, I feel like the media is betraying these people as bad, yeah, you know what? There are some people that are bad, and I can tell you right now. I keep trying to say this, and I'm going to say this again. It seems like there's a problem in the South, and because of the media, it's being brought up and it is being publicized. You know, and again, these officers should be arrested and should be, you know, brought up on charges if that's what really happened. But if they're legitimately doing their job, and they use a little bit of excessive force to take somebody down. You know, who am I to sit here and say that these people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, you know? Now, again, eight shots is way more than excessive. That's just, okay, yeah, you definitely need to go to jail, you know? Yeah, you should have shot, like, shot. Once you make contact, you you should, I mean, of course, it's hard, I can't. you can't speak for the officer because when your adrenaline's going, you know what I'm saying, and you're, you know, I mean, it's very hard to, you know, it, well, I should just say, it's very easy to say, oh, just only shoot once or twice and, you know, the person, you know, if they get hit, then they'll hit the ground or whatever. And when your adrenaline's going, you know, you're going to keep shooting until, you know, the the old joke was, you know, when I was in corrections, you know, the, the joke was like if, if an officer hit an inmate over the head with their baton and they, oh, why'd you hit him over the baton, over what, why'd you hit, you know, the, 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 the joke would be, if you're being questioned on why you hit an inmate over the head with a baton, why'd you hit him 20 times? And the, and the answer would be because 19 wasn't enough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'm not making a joke of this guy's life. I'm just saying is, you know, they go, oh, why'd you shoot him eight times? Because seven times wasn't enough. Obviously, seven times is a lot. Um, you know, you, it's very hard to speak for somebody whose adrenaline is pumping, who's trying to keep the control of the situation. Now, as, as you're talking, I'm watching the video. The guy starts to get out of the car. And the cop kind of gives him a warning, and he goes back in the car, and then he yeah. gets, and then he gets back out of the car, and he runs again. So he had a chance. He had a chance to to not make the stupid mistake that he did. Now, of course, you know, there's people who are like, oh, the the good, the cop's a murderer, and he's getting what he deserves. But you know what? At least the cop is going to jail. You know, you know, if, if you're talking about <clears throat> going to jail 
or dying, I think I'd rather go to jail. You know, the, the, this guy, uh, Walter Scott, escalated a situation where he's no longer around. You know, and they're talking about, <clears throat> oh, this cop, he has a uh, he has a kid on the way and his and his wife is pregnant. And they're like, but you know what? It, it may be through. It may be in a prison's visitation room, but this guy's eventually going to see his kid. The cop is eventually going to see his kid. Walter Scott is never going to see his kids because he's dead. You know, and 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 and, and he and, brought that on himself. Exactly. You you know, had had you just just sat there, you know, what I'm saying, and maybe it would have been Walter Scott in jail seeing his kids, but you know, the kids that he hasn't paid child support for in over ten years, mind you. Um, you know, it's, it's well just, clearly. Well, see, here, he's here, never gotten away from the cops. <laughs> here's the thing. Clearly, because there's other there's other dashboard camera video from other police officers clearly he called for backup so and i think in the video you hear him calling for backup too so clearly if this guy was out to stop this guy was out there to just kill a random black guy you know clearly this guy would have you know wouldn't have called for backup and would have gotten caught either way now i mean it's 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 casting doubt on the fact that this guy's being brought up on charges and you know being not only being brought up on charges but did he do his job and was there something else that we didn't see or did you know is there something going on that we don't know about because here's the thing eight shots if there was if he shot him eight times was this guy trying to reach for something and that's why he shot him eight times or and again the officer may have thought that he was reaching for something or whatever but or did he really just shoot him eight times because his adrenaline was up and you know he was in the situation of where i gotta protect myself and stay alive kind of deal you know you just don't know you just don't know you're not the officer don't but, agitate the situation. Don't and I, and I take the situation. Don't irritate the officer. Go on, sir. And I, and I completely agree with you. I think that if had he had he not gotten out of the car, this situation wouldn't have escalated. Now, again, I don't know all the information, and I'm not saying that this officer shouldn't be arrested. If the guy really shot him eight times, and really did Trying this, to plant the taser on the body. Plant a taser, which doesn't make sense. If see, that's the part I don't understand. If he shot him eight times, then what the hell does a taser have to do with anything? No, no, no. The he, the, the allegedly, the cop put the taser by the guy's body after after everything was said and done, so he can say, "Oh, this guy grabbed for my taser, and I shot him because he grabbed for my taser." Basically, basically, they're trying to say that the cop was trying to plant evidence, which you know, trying to you know. Uh, you know, he made the cop made a horrible, horrible mistake and was trying to exploit the situation by 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 putting you know putting the taser by the dead body. You know, like like Chris Rock, Chris Rock used to make that joke, like or or it was a Dave Chappelle, whatever. Sprinkle a little crack on the body. You know, as long as you, as long well, as you I, I don't kill know kill anybody you like, as long as you sprinkle some crack on them when they're done. So you can I was going to ask actually because you have the story up. Does there was something about they were trying to figure out if he if um if the officer actually did CPR on him or something. Oh, the videos that I've seen so I watched the, I watched the video a couple of different times and there's I I haven't seen but then again it, it, there's nothing gets nothing gets that uh you know it just sort of like it kind of shuts off after when you see the, you know you you see the guy running from the from the cop and then and then you know they don't really I'm still I'm looking for the actual cell phone video cuz I know there's there's the, the one I keep seeing is the cu- video from the guys uh from the dash cam and then... Well there there's other dash cam pit, uh videos that have been released there's one where this cop actually pulls up on the scene you see the the person taking the cell phone mm-hmm. video to the left mm-hmm. but they just show him pulling up um I don't know I mean it's just I don't know it just doesn't seem something's off you know what I mean like I if the again, if the guy shot him twenty times, if the guy shot him twenty times, shot him eight times, you know, and you know, okay, fine, we're all we're all human. We get scared. Somebody, we think somebody's going to reach for something, and you know, we take it to a point where it should have been. You know, should this officer probably be up on murder charges, and you know, should he have been fired by the department? I'm not, I'm going to sit here and say I, I wouldn't have. I, I mean, I don't know if they did a grand jury or if they even investigated this, but from the sounds of it, it doesn't sound like they did an investigation or even did a grand jury thing. It just sounds like they fired him. And don't get me wrong. Okay, fine. If he did what he did, yeah, fire his ass, throw his ass in jail. But again, you know, if he didn't and this guy was just shot, you know, he just 
you know, he was trying to do his job, and, you know, okay, fine, maybe his adrenaline was too high and whatever. This man should be just maybe suspended or something. Well, my thing you is know? this. You look, I'm not trying to say – I'm not trying to say this is the right thing. And this is kind of goes down to, like, uh, you know, Chris Rock. Chris Rock had posted up some things about how – he takes a selfie every time his car gets pulled over. And he's like, he'd been pulled over seven, he, what, I want to say seven times in 13 weeks or something like that, which is like damn near pretty much every other day. And then another another black celebrity, and I forgot who the, the guy was, had said, look, you know, he basically on on Twitter told Chris Rock, um, you know what you do? St- stop driving a nice car and just buy a Prius, you know, because cops, he goes, ever since I bought a Prius, cops have stopped pulling me over every two seconds. Um, and of course, I mean, that's a horrible, horrible way to live your life. If, if you're a person, you're a celebrity and you've earned that fame and you've earned that nice car. Absolutely. You shouldn't you shouldn't have to be harassed or anything like that. But you sometimes you do have to adapt, you know, um, you know, they'll, and they're like, oh, well, a black person shouldn't have to adapt. Well, you know what? Everybody should have to adapt to everything. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't be scared of walking in any neighborhood at three o'clock in the morning. I mean, you kind of like to bring it back to like we were talking about earlier where, where I work. You know, the, 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 the contractors that come to my store at three o'clock in the morning and want to step outside and smoke a cigarette, they shouldn't have to be on alert on, on if they're going outside just to smoke a cigarette. The same way, uh, you know, uh, Chris Rock shouldn't have to be alert that the cops are going to pull him over. But, you know, it's a sad fact. It's a sad fact that if you look one way and you're in a place that you don't look like you belong, bad things might happen to you. Is it right? No. Is it real? Yes. So sometimes, you know, you just, you do have to adapt. Now, my thing is that, you know, uh, you know, and I've, I've been pulled over, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've been arrested, you know, I've, I've spent the night in county jail. Uh, you know, it's, it's where, you know, and, and on the flip side, I was an auxiliary police officer. I was a correction officer. I was a school safety officer. I was a, you know, uh, you know, I was, I've been on both sides of the law um, where, you I you can say like you know when you deal with a cop especially in in this day and age where if you if if it is let's just say it's an let's you know and forgive me for saying let's just say it's, a, it's an accepted fact that all cops are racist well you know you know what if you're a black guy and you get pulled over by a fucking racist cop then maybe play the fucking game you know chill out don't get loud don't just fucking go through it. you know and 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 like i said i've i've been in trouble with the law that being said when i got pulled over i don't escalate the situation you sit there does it hurt your pride yes of course it certainly hurts your pride you know what i'm saying if a cop if an officer curses you out you know i've been pulled over by cops i mean this is more for like speeding tickets stuff like that i've been cursed out by cops where they've said everything about me and you know and and you know what and if you know at the end of the day you may not get a ticket, I'd, I'd rather have a cop curse me out, <laughs> curse my mother out, <laughs> you know. And, 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 and if that doesn't mean I'm not getting a ticket or I'm not going to spend a night in jail, go right ahead, officer. Curse me the fuck out, you know. But uh, – and that's the whole thing. I, I think is it – if you honestly feel in your heart of hearts that cops are evil, racist scumbags, well, then when you get pulled over, don't give them a reason to fucking – Exactly. Don't give them a reason to, to, to don't escalate the situation. Don't give them a reason to fucking uh, to further search you or to, or to further and don't run and don't resist arrest. You know, uh, a little earlier today, I posted a video on my Facebook page and uh, it's about uh, I mean, shit. I just had it a second ago. And as soon as I go to click on it, it fucking goes away. Um, it happened in Virginia, uh, and a 17 year old passenger and these cops pulled over somebody. Be- they, these, these, it's a woman and a, and a young and a kid. When I say kid, I mean, the kid says he's 17, uh, a 17 year old boy and, and a woman in a car. And she had set up her cell phone in the car to take video of the pull of the of the stop. So the cops pull her over and she's and so they ask her to step out the car. Originally, they stopped her because of burnt out license plate bulb. They tell her to step out of the car. She goes, why, why are we at, being asked to step out of the car? The guy goes, I smell marijuana. So she goes, well, I don't allow marijuana in my car. She keeps repeating that. I don't allow marijuana in my car. Lady, that is not a fucking, that's not a logical argument. If a cop says, I smell marijuana in the car, and you say, I don't allow, first and foremost, you have no idea what people bring into your car, whether you know it or not. You know, uh, you, know you have no control over what other people bring into your car. This kid, who is 17, he looks like, look, I mean, I'm, I'm I, you know, far be it for me to fucking call, you know, uh, to, to, to use stereotypes. This kid looks like he could have been smoking pot. I wouldn't be surprised if the kid wasn't smoking pot. I wouldn't be surprised if he really, if he was smoking pot. Um, so, so she goes, well, I don't allow, I don't, 
whether you say that or not, you know, like I said, I was a correction officer for 10 years. Every inmate in jail says I didn't, you know, every in jail is full of guilt. Jail is full of innocent people. <laughs> you know, if you believe if you believe what the inmates tell you, jail is full of innocent people. Everybody's railroaded by the system. And she goes, oh, I don't believe. So you think just because you tell the cop I don't allow marijuana in my car, you think, oh, the cops is going to say, oh, OK, you don't let it. Oh, because you said so. No, go right ahead. Keep on driving, lady. No, the cop said he smells marijuana. Whether he's using that as an excuse or not, you know, you can't fight that. The, co- the officer said when, when all is said and done, if you happen to survive this situation and you end up in front of a judge, who do you think the judge is going to believe when the cop says, I, sm- I, th- I felt I, s- I smelled marijuana in the car? Who do you think the cop's going to believe? The, who do you think the judge is going to believe? The cop or you who say, I don't allow marijuana in a car? And even if you do, you have no control of who brings what in your car. Maybe the kid did have marijuana on it. You know? And then the kid goes, then the, the, the bigger part of the situation is the kid goes, oh, I'm 17. You can't do anything until my mother gets here. You can't. And they tell him, step out of the car. Oh, you can't do anything. And, and you know what? To be honest with you, I don't, I'm not 100% sure what the rules are with that. But the cops tell I you think- to step out the car. You step the fuck out the car. You know, they kept telling him, get out, get out. And then the the cop, unfortunately, the cop lost his cool. And the cop's like, get out. Now, I don't care what, you know, this is, I'm sort of paraphrasing my own Facebook post. I don't care what moral high ground you have. I don't care what argument you're trying to have. The person who has the gun wins the argument. (laughs) And so they they tell this kid, get out of the car, get out of the car, get out of the car. He he refuses to get out of the car. They don't know. And no, mind you, this is a big 17-year-old. I mean, he's 17, but, I mean, he looks like a young man. Um, which, I, which I guess 17 year olds are young men um, the cops are telling you to get out of the car he doesn't they tase him and of course he flips the fuck out from being tased you know and so but all you had to do was listen all you had to do was get out of the car because let me tell you had he had he got on the car you know say what you got to say okay 17 and then the cops whatever the cops said to him he would have had such a fucking wonderful lawsuit on his hands. Right. The cops violated his rights after he complied. If you comply with the cop and then the cop decides to, out of nowhere, just because he doesn't like you hitting over the head with a fucking baton, you know, that's a fucking payday. Well, okay, <laughs> so basically here's the thing. If, and drink, um, and we'll we'll end it here because we should go to commercial. <laughs> yeah, we're way, we're way past it. Tangents. Um, here's the thing. If an officer tells you to get out of the car, you should get out of the car. If, you know, the officer says, I want to search your car, I don't know, I don't remember, I think at New York State they have to have a warrant. I don't remember if they changed the law, but they still need to have permission to go in their car. If you have nothing, if you have nothing to hide, let these officers go through your car, okay? Um, 90% of the time, it seems like 90% of the time, the way the media portrays it, but 90% of the time these officers are not going to be, you know, they're going to do their job, they're going to look, and they're going to let you go on your way, you know? Yeah, it might suck. You might get pulled over right before you're supposed to be to work, you know? Just let them do their job. Always, always, when you get pulled over, pull over to the side, put your hands immediately on the wheel. Do not move. Do not give them any indication to pull their gun on you. Just, you know. Yeah, the cops don't know. Cops spend all day pulling over assholes, low lives, and scumbags. Even if you're the most innocent fucking person on the planet. The cops are used to dealing with low lives. When you start resisting, you automatically, in that cop's mind, you're you're filed under scumbag. Exactly. You're filed under piece of shit because you well, know, all I, I the people that they do, all the people that they do find shit on before the cops found it. All those people said, "I have nothing in the car. I don't allow marijuana in the car." You know what I'm saying? Every person who gets arrested, did any? Have you ever watched cops? Everybody denies everything. So even if you are innocent, put yourself in the fucking shoes of the cop. Here's a guy who's been been he's been he's been dealing with scumbags his entire career he knows what scumbags look like he knows what scumbags act like and now while you resisting because you're trying to hold you're, you're holding some sort of uh you know oh i know my rights and all this shit uh, you know and like i said i mean not that i'm saying we should give up our rights i understand and i'm all for i'm against illegal search and seizure but there's also common sense where a cop who deals with scumbags all day, you might have caught that cop on a bad day. Cops are fucking human beings. Exactly. Maybe his wife didn't give him pussy the night before and he's irritated. You don't know what's going on. And the same way they don't know anything about you. They don't know anything. They don't know. Like I said, every piece of shit low life criminal that they find a gun on or drugs on at the beginning say they're innocent. Oh, I don't know where those drugs come from. I don't know where that gun came from. It could be a gun in their own fucking jacket pocket. I don't know where it came from. You know what I'm saying? They deal with people who are trying to weasel their way out of bullshit all the time. 
and you're just another person in their day. And so just have a little fucking common sense when they deal with the cops. Yes, it's okay to stand up for your rights. Okay, but uh, like I put in my Facebook post, and this is something I learned from when I was a correction officer. You comply, then complain. You comply, exactly. then complain. Follow the rules of the cop. If he if he violates your your rights after you're complying, then go fucking. There's there's a million lawyer sites. <laughs> you know, watch daytime TV. There's a million the way, lawyers you can call and sue the shit out of the police if they did you wrong. And here's the other thing too: is you have you can put a camera in your car. If you're that, if you're getting pulled over a lot and you're getting you know harassed to the point where you feel like you need to put something in your car, then you need to do it. Period. So just to comply then complain. Comply then complain. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> that's the name of the. <laughs> that's the name, name of the episode. episode. Comply then complain. Comply and complain. And we'll be back with more dick and fart jokes. This episode of Two Strangers One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc. Eleven Fifteen East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building, door number eight. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comics etc1. Click and Hit, enhancing the experience for all recreational smokers. Click and Hit is a one-handed portable vaporizer. This smoking pipe has a compact four-stage design, complete with a built-in, windproof, butane refillable torch lighter. The large burn chamber holds your stash of legal herb or pipe tobacco. Click the button to ignite and inhale as usual. When you are done, put it back in your pocket for later. Smoke anytime with the touch of a button. No more carrying around grinders and tins. You can leave the pipe, rolling papers, and even your lighter at home. The Click and Hit cordless vaporizer is no bigger than a normal cigar, making it the world's smallest and most discreet vaporizer. It's perfect for use in small places or shared rooms. It's efficient, getting five to eight drawers from your packed chamber. It's affordable at just $19.95 each. Buy three and the shipping is free. Buy four and you get the fifth one free. Visit www.click the letter N hit.com. That's clickandhit.com. And now for listeners of Two Strangers One Podcast, you can use promo code STRANGERS and receive 10% off your purchase at clickandhit.com. That's promo code STRANGERS for 10% off your purchase. And we're back. All right, Paul, let's get to the fun part of the show. Not that the first part isn't, you know, I just, you know, I, I'm glad we separate the nerdy shit from the real shit because. Um, I'm like last week. I don't want to be all depressed. <laughs> but, fucking Tangent uh, City last week. Instead of Suplex month. City, it was fucking Tangent City last week. <laughs> now, um, I think the biggest news as of like tonight, as we're like recording this, uh, Netflix uh, has finally has released its Daredevil series. Um, you know, I, I've watched all the trailers. Um, I, I'm like, part of me wants to get Netflix just to watch Daredevil and then cancel it. <laughs> Cause you know, like Netflix, like I get, I, I've, I had them years ago. Then I got tired of their fucking bullshit. And I mind you, I haven't gotten Netflix back since, you know, like ever since they started doing all their original programming, I, I haven't had Netflix in like well over like two years. Um, yeah. I've heard, a, I've heard a lot of people. I mean, there's people out there that are Netflix fiends, but I've also heard a lot of people have moved away from Netflix because um, Netflix doesn't keep the shows that they get, which I yeah, think that's, is that's, that's an unfortunate. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the rules, the, the, the crazy rules of Hollywood, especially in the new media of online distribution, you know, oh, you can have this, but you can't have that. Or, you know, like, or, you know, there'll be certain shows and I'm just, you know, let me just throw, I'm trying to think of a current one, you know, oh, you can have the the five most current episodes but you know you can't have you know you can't i want to say i think like better call saul was like one of them where like you go see like the most you can see like the past five episodes of better call saul but if there was episodes before that you can't see them you know well, so and, and and it's kind of you, you know i hate to bring this this subject up real quick and hopefully this doesn't set us off on the tangent <laughs> but you know, I've always thought because Mechas XLR was written off, the broadcast rights were written off by Cartoon Network. Um, I always said to myself, and and I continue to to question this: Could Mechas XLR be brought back onto a Netflix type platform, whether it be Netflix or Hulu or whatever? Because yeah, Cartoon Network wrote off the broadcast rights, but they never there wasn't anything called digital rights back then yeah back so in 2004, 2004. right so technically speaking from an accounting point of view even though the broadcast rights aren't there you could feasibly go well 
guess what? I'm going to put it on Netflix and we're going to see what happens. Which, you know, and, and you know, there is the precedent of that Titmouse, which Megas XLR was, for, for lack of a better term, one of their first cartoons. Uh, Titmouse has already done the Netflix exclusive Turbo Fast based off that, you know, the snail movie Turbo. Exactly. Uh, you know, so, and, so Titmouse has already worked with Netflix over and, 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 an and exclusive I'm, Netflix show. And, I, and I'm sure that they've they've talked to Netflix and I'm I'm sure that, you know, Cartoon Network is still going, no, you can't do that. But I, I you know, it, it, it's it's funny because, like, if you look at Megas XLR is you can actually get it on iTunes, mm-hmm. but you can't get it. But you can't put it on TV. So technically, if Cartoon Network's putting it on digital distribution through iTunes, then why are we even having this conversation? Why is it not on i? Why is it not on Netflix? You know. So I, I, that's the only that's kind of the thing that's always like boggled my mind. I'm just sitting there going, ah, Netflix, why aren't you keeping these good shows? Well, it's just Cartoon Network is just they're just being Dickheads. difficult, and and no one's looking. There's no real due diligence going on. There's no one really looking into it. There's no one really investigating, because you know. Uh, a lawyer can ask to do to do part of an investigation, but you know you can only go so far. You can only do so much. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, if you you know, it's like it's like if you know, it's like trying to pick up somebody who doesn't want to get picked up. You know, as in like a person that's like laying on the ground. If they throw all their weight down, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They do everything they can. I mean, I'm pretty sure if someone looked hard enough, and they, and they did the due diligence of the paperwork and finding out where you know who owns what and where did you know what happened to such and such and what happened to this, what happened to that. I'm pretty sure we could find it out. But you know, Cartoon Network isn't cooperating unless a fucking you know a magic wand was wa- was waved and said okay you know you know someone like let's just say if someone with money showed up and said okay let's figure out let's figure this shit out then all of a sudden magically i'm pretty sure they'd find every you know loose end and tie everything up but they're not, they're not working for it but like i mean you are correct that you know they say oh you know it's on digital distribution on on itunes well then technically that means it can exist on netflix that means technically you know if you wanted to i i would think you could make new shows you know oh they're right you're writing it off as a as a loss well how could you write it off as a loss if overseas you're still showing it well you're showing it for free overseas was it a freebie the rest of the world gets to watch what are you giving what is this a fucking charity the rest of the world gets to watch megas xlr and you know someone overseas in the name of cartoon network or under the umbrella of cartoon network is making some of that fucking money you know, don't play fucking stupid. But, you know, over here in the United States, oh, it's a loss. You know, we don't air it anymore. It's a loss. So since we're not making any profit, you know, we're not going to show anything because we're not making a profit off of it. It's bullshit. It's total bullshit. You know, and and like I said, that's unfortunately that's on the that's that's on the, the shoulders of, of Cartoon Network. Unless someone forced their fucking hand, they're not going to do anything about it. By the way, Netflix. If you're smart, you'll release that DVD. You'll release a DVD with uh, Daredevil on it. I'm just saying. <laughs> and and let me tell you, like, because I had gotten an email, uh, you know, the you know, uh, under one of my one of my you know normal email accounts, where it's like Netflix contact, you know, and it's like you know we want you back. Here's another month free. Because when I first tried Netflix a couple years ago, you know, I got a free month, and you know, and I enjoyed their service for one the time I had it. And then you know, so now they're basically saying, you know, here's another month free. Part of me. Part of me wants to take him up on that offer, um, you know. But of course, you know. I mean, you know, the internet being the internet, I'm pretty sure if I looked hard enough, I could find those episodes that <laughs> not on Netflix. Um, but that, you know, whether that's right or not, it's a whole other issue. Um, but uh, I mean, I keep watching the trailer. I mean, Vincent D'Onofrio, you know, especially you know, the guy who played Gomer Pyle in uh, Full Metal Jacket. Uh, he was the bad guy in the Jennifer Lopez movie The Cell. Um, you know, he was in. Uh, Law and Order. I think it was Special Victims Unit. I forget which one he's on. He was on one. The one that was sex crimes. Which one? Or what, the, I, the, I think it was the one that had to do with the sex crimes. I want to yeah, say Special F- Victims. Yeah. SVU. I think he was on that show. I could be wrong. I don't watch. Who, who was, that's what I was asking. Who's the name? Vincent D'Onofrio. Vincent D'Onofrio. Who the fuck? He's the tall, scary-looking guy. <laughs> tall, scary-looking guy. Yeah. Kind of had curly hair. I mean, in, in Daredevil, he's bald. He's 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 the he's the king. Oh, that's that one. I know who you're talking about. He's like he, he plays the kingpin. Yeah, the guy who plays the um, kingpin was yeah, on Law and Order. Uh, it was Law and Order. Uh, criminal Intent. Criminal Intent. Okay. He was. 
I'm trying to think. No, he just did criminal intent. Yeah. Okay. I I, I was I, I that sounds about right. So. Uh, so the, I mean, the point being is that you know his. I mean, his longest. The funny thing is that we're both arguing over like Law and Order, which is probably his most well-known uh, role. But I was saying, I mean, the guy is a fucking uh, a brilliant actor. I mean, even if you want to go to the, to the nerdy parts, I mean, he was the guy who turned into the bug in uh, Men in Black One. You know, the the bad guy from Men in Black One. Terrific actor. Ter- I mean, and perfect. Perfect casting for playing the kingpin. Um, you know, uh, he looks so fucking badass. They, uh, of course, it was all over my Facebook feed. The new, like, uh, the official Daredevil costume. Uh, well, not the costume. The, the, you know, from the neck down, fine. You know, it looks like body armor. It looks like he's flexible. It looks like semi-ninja, semi-military. I get that. I'm not a fan of the mask. It's too angular. It looks too robotic. It doesn't. It doesn't look like... You know, um, and, and trust me, I'm not trying to say anything about the. I don't think the Ben Affleck one was any good either, but the the way the helmet just well, it actually looks look like right. the, it looks like the Ben Affleck one, kind of. And I, I love how people are like, "Oh, this looks awesome! It's so much different from the Ben Affleck one." I'm like, first of all, you're only seeing one glimpse of it, and B, it actually looks like the same thing, kind of. So. You know, it's going to be one of those wait and see things. Yeah, I just, I don't, I mean, of course, I don't know if, the, I don't know if it's the whole season. And I looked it up, I looked it up before the episode. It's, it is 13 episodes uh, this season. Um, I don't know if this whole season, or maybe, maybe at the last ep- I, I I'm just totally guessing. This whole season, he's wearing, he's not wearing the Daredevil outfit. He's wearing basically all black ninja-ish, ninja style, you know, with a with a thing wrapped around his head. One, it's to conceal his identity. And two, he doesn't eat eye holes because he's fucking blind. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. you, know, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't see how they reveal the costume in a picture. But the first season is supposed to be him not in costume. So, I mean, maybe it's the very last episode. We finally get a chance to see the real costume or, or maybe halfway through the episode. Yeah, that's what I heard. Costume. I mean, the rumor is, is that at the end of the series, he at the end of the series, at the end of season, the season, basically, he gets you get to see his suit. So yeah, he's, he's full on the daredevil that that, you know, we know from the comics. Um, and, uh, and also it's kind of funny that like, you know, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, once again, who plays uh, Wilson Frisk, the Kingpin, uh, years and years and years ago, I would say, I would easily say very likely probably one of his first roles, if not his first role, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio was in the movie, uh, Adventures in Babysitting. And I did you ever see Adventures in Babysitting? It was, kind, so. it's a very, very cute movie. It's very fun. I mean, it's super eighties. Um, it's about, you know, a woman uh, who's babysitting the kids, but the kids are all fucking badasses and, you know, they keep, you know, they keep escaping her and, and, and getting into deeper and deeper trouble. Well, in the movie, the, now in the movie, they're, they're, you know, the little girl that, that's being babysat or whatever, you know, there's like three kids, you know, two boys and a little girl. The little girl, and mind you, this is the early 80s, um, is a diehard Thor fan. You know, and you know, and it was very cute. And like, and th- during the whole movie, she wears like Thor's helmet, like you know, plastic version of Thor's helmet. And you know, and Vincent D'Onofrio, a young, thin <laughs> Vincent D'Onofrio, uh, has long blonde hair, and and he he comes, to, he he's like a a, a, a a tow car, a tow truck driver, and he ends up like helping them, even though like they don't have any money or anything like that. And like he puts on the helmet and it's it's alluded to, you know, I mean, as a joke, it's not trying to say it's seriously Thor, but like even the little girl goes, that's Thor. You know, he's in disguise or whatever, you know, as a as a muscular, thin guy with, you know, long blonde hair or whatever. So it's kind of funny that, you know, Vincent D'Onofrio years and years and years ago played Thor, techn- not technically Thor, but, as a, you know, enough where, you know, it, it was a cute little wink to Thor. And now years later, well, now he's the bad guy now, uh, depending on your point of view. Some people say Wilson Fisk is not the bad guy. But, um, you know, it's it's I don't know. I just I just found that a little cute that years ago he played Thor and now he's playing Kingpin. Um, and I got to give I got to give John J. Galbo um, part of the uh, the swim cast. This was the, the Adult Swim podcast. Uh, him and I were kind of going back and forth earlier on, on Facebook today. And he had said as a joke, you know, what if, you know, I was talking about Disney Uh, Because they're coming out with a game called uh, Lego Dimensions. And it's a video game that's sort of mixing some of the Lego franchises. um, Not all of them, but uh, it's Lego Batman, or should I say Lego DC, uh, Lego Lord of the Rings, and uh, characters from the actual Lego movie. So it's a video game where it's sort of like this funky crossover between uh, 
<laughs> Lord of the Rings DC comic book heroes, and and then and then on other things like in the game, they show parts of Back to the Future, they show parts of Wizard of Oz. So it's this weird, funky crossover universe thing going on. You know, using uh, DC, uh, using Legos as the as the combining uh, glue of all these universes. Um, and I, you know, I pointed out. I said, you know, the DC, uh, the I mean, excuse me, the Lego video games, they have done. A Marvel video game. They've done a couple of Marvel video games. So technically, technically, you can do a Marvel DC crossover using the Legos. Of course, it's not going to happen. Uh, but, you know, just wishful thinking. And so John J. Uh, Galbo said, uh, oh, well, you know, if, if if Disney was to buy Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers, you know, owns DC, uh, then we'd be able to have a crossover. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. And, you know, and Disney buys everything anyway. Anyway. You know, Disney has bought, uh, you know, the Muppets. Disney has bought Marvel. Disney has bought Star Wars. So why not have um, <laughs> you know, Disney buying Warner Brothers? Then we could have a, a pure, pure uh, official crossover where we can have, you know, Superman fighting Wolverine or Superman and Wolverine together in the same movie. If if Disney was to buy out Warner Brothers. Um, oh, you wanted to talk about Super Troopers. Oh, yes. How they're doing on their fine crowd, fine crowdfunding Efforts. Yes, open your mouth and talk. Um, um, so here's the thing: <laughs> Super Troopers has done awesome. Uh, Super Troopers two, uh, they set a goal for two million, and the first day that they had it up, by within 24 hours, they actually had the two million dollars. Mm-hmm. Currently, right now, they're over th- 3.5 million, mm-hmm. um, and they're looking, and they got about 14 days left. I'm kind of hoping that they can continue to do well because you know. Obviously, they they need as much money as they can, and I and I hope that they will do as much as they can. You know, yeah. Because let me tell you, when when Super Troopers One came out, now at that time, there was a girl. I don't want to say I was dating her because we weren't dating, but I had liked her. She known I liked her, and and she worked in a movie theater, so she used to like I would give her a ride home from work when she got out of work, and then part of like you know, and you know me, I love going to movies, and I, and of course. Paul, if anyone, anyone knows, Paul knows, I love free movies. Um, basically, like, you know, she would let me into her theater, and I'd go watch movies, and then at the end of the day, you know, I would take her home. So I remember going to see Super Troopers, not knowing a fucking thing about it. You know, I th- and sometimes, you know, a lot of people, you know, obviously we get movies drilled into our heads, and, you know, oh, we're going to go see it. And unfortunately, sometimes the commercials spoil some of the best parts. Um, I, would, I would suggest one day just choosing some random fucking movie and going to see it because when you see a movie that hasn't been spoiled by any kind of media or anything like that, um, it, it is it is an incredible experience. I mean, unfortunately, nowadays, I mean, all the big, big tentpole movies get spoiled ridiculously during the commercials. But OK, so Super Troopers, I mean, I knew it was a comedy. I knew it was about state troopers, but that was about about as far as I knew. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. The first time I saw Super Troopers, I thought it was so fucking stupid. I said, this is the stupidest movie I've ever seen in my life. This is so fucking retarded. And especially if it has to do with, like, potheads and stuff like that. I was like, you know, I, I kind of, like, I never really like stoners. Um, but I was like, oh, my God, this movie's so stupid. Then, for some reason, I don't know, I guess watching it a second time and a third time, you know, and, and uh, like, catching it on cable or whatever, like... It, or not on cables, uh, catching it on uh, Comedy Central. When Comedy Central, like on Saturday nights, when, you know, before, when, while, while Tsunami was out, uh, you know, Comedy Central used to give, like, uncensored movies after midnight on Saturday nights. So catching it, like, in Comedy Central, like, I started watching it a couple more times. I'm like, this movie's really fucking funny, <laughs> you know? And it, it even got to the point where I have it well, somewhere in my house, but, I mean, I have it on DVD, you know? It's like I've grown to like that movie more and more and more. Um, you know, uh, you know, I love, I liked beer fest. I hated club dread. Club dread was so fucking stupid and slamming salmon. Wasn't that great either. Um, beer fest was okay. That's the thing. Beer fest was good. Super troopers. Like I said, after watching it a second, the third time, like I started to really like it. Um, I think super troopers two is going to be fucking hilarious. So, um, you know, it just shows you like, you know, crowdfunding, you know, nowadays, you know, we've always, you know, when, when we were younger, like, oh, you know, if I had the money, I'd remake this movie or I'd help make a sequel or whatever. You know, now you, you know, with the technology, we've gotten to the point where, you know, you could go straight to the fans and say, hey, look, you know, this is what we need. Uh, you know, if you can give us money, we can get it done. Um, 
and of course, you know, there, there's plenty of examples, but I just want, you know, me being a heavy metal fan, um, I just want to let people know that Megadeth, uh, they're, they're crowdfunding their newest album. Uh, it's their 15th studio album. Um, it, it has uh, Dave Mustaine, you know, the original singer, guitarist, uh, Dave Ellefson, uh, who had left for a little while and come back, um, Chris Adler, who's the, who was, who, I guess who's technically still is the drummer for Lamb of God, but... Uh, and he's just doing the studio work. He's not touring. And this Italian guitarist, I, I forgot his name off the top of my head. I'm not familiar with, origi- with his original band. Um, but they're putting together a new Megadeth album. And so uh, if you are a Megadeth fan, you can go online right now. And, and, and I don't think it's, you know, it's $15 to download the album when they finish recording it, of course. But <clears throat> nowadays, I don't think that's asking too much. I mean, you know, and and and. When you think about it with crowdfunding, I mean, back in the day, yeah, yeah, you paid fifteen dollars for that CD, but it went to promotions and to record company people, and you know, you're paying for some record executives' fucking swimming pool. Uh, you know, now you know the money goes straight to the band. The same way money goes straight to the band when you see a band tour. Not that that's it. Not that's any kind of legit reason to fucking uh, download or torrent <laughs> music and shit like that. But you know, uh, bands bands make their money nowadays touring. And it's funny, like I mentioned Megadeth, I mean, Metallica, uh, they, they have had some, they made some mistakes where they, they you know, they, they put that movie out called Through the Never, which unfortunately, as much as I love, Meg, as long, as much as I love Metallica, Through the Never was a horrible fucking movie. Um, you know, they did, a, they did a, a, a summertime concert called the Orion Fest. That was a fucking huge financial bust. So it's to the point where Metallica kind of has to keep touring <laughs> to put their albums out because, uh, unfortunately, they lost. Like when you combined all the money they lost, they lost like thirty million dollars. Uh, uh, so they they kind of have to keep touring. But you know, for the fans of Megadeth, you can uh, check out their website and go. I, I, you know, I'm I'm seriously contemplating as soon as I have a couple bucks in my pocket, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely download them. I'm gonna pay. You know, for you know, Me- and let me tell you, Megadeth was the the first time I ever heard .dot com on anything was Megadeth. I had bought one of their CDs and it said Megadeth .dot com, and I had to go to one of my friends who you know this is. You know, even though I had used the internet back in the day, back when it was like AOL and AOL chat rooms, but it was before like dot com websites were a thing, uh, you know, before you even needed Internet Explorer on your computer. And I went to my friend, I'm like, what the fuck is Megadeth dot com? And, you know, and I, and like that's how I got exposed to the term like the Internet. And and, <laughs> and, and like I said, everything I knew before that was like AOL or CompuServe or, you know, stuff where your computer would sign on but you would use their programs you would use their chatting their web surfing their search engines so uh like i said megadeth you know it's they're still good damn it um have you you don't watch agents of shield right um no i actually don't have um i do don't don't watch agents of shield so yeah well but i don't have the time that's the problem yeah they they're doing a because you know, the Avengers, you know, we got the Avengers 2 coming out. Uh, you have uh, Avengers, the first Avengers, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong here, was like the third high, most highest grossing movie in history, like after like Titanic and Avatar. Um, with that being said, you know, there are a lot of fair weather fans who, you know, know the Avengers. You know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of people, you know, we, of course, we sit here and we talk about comic book movies. But it's one thing to like, there's people who are like kind of, you know, they'll go see the Avengers or whatever. Or they'll watch it on DVD. But, you know, they they're, they don't follow it as closely as like people like us would. Um, so since the Avengers 1 came out, when, you know, if, if for those who may have missed Captain America to the Winter Soldier or, or, or episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, uh, spoiler alert, I mean, you know, we find out that uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., the, the, the organization which is pretty much organized the Avengers, um, has been infiltrated for the past 50 or 60 years by the bad guys, Hydra. You know, and it was, you know, and it was this huge twist where, holy shit, you know, the people, the bad guys we were supposed to be fighting were part, you know, control this, org- you know, the, the bad guys were controlling the good guys for fucking half a century. Um, and it was a wonderful, terrific twist. I mean, I honestly didn't see it coming. Uh, you know, they had left little eggs here and there for you to pick up. So, like, when you watch the movies later on, you're like, oh, okay. You know, and so, so they have this huge twist. So now, for people that are fans of the Avengers, you know, uh, people who, the, the casual fans who are going to go and watch Avengers 2 Age of Ultron, they don't know that S.H.I.E.L.D. is, not, Shield is now the bad guys. So they've introduced introduced this stupid fucking plot line into Agents of Shield where they're like, "Oh well, there's Shield and then there's the real Shield," 
you know, oh, Hydra, yeah, they only infiltrated the public face of S.H.I.E.L.D. Whenever you heard S.H.I.E.L.D. mentioned on the radio and on TV, that was our public face. But that's not the real S.H.I.E.L.D. We're the real S.H.I.E.L.D. And it's, it's you know, it's really trying to really trying to force like a, 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 a way to fix it. So when casual fans go watch the Avengers 2 and they show if S.H.I.E.L.D. shows up in Avengers 2, they're like, you know, for the casual fan, they don't know that, oh, they've been infiltrated by the bad guys for generations. So it, I just find it kind of cheesy. They should have just went with it. They should have just left it the way it was, you know. And then, and then, you know, maybe if they wrote it correctly, have people like you know give them a reason to watch a Winter Soldier, give them a reason to watch Agents of Shield. But unfortunately, you know, like I've been complaining for in the past couple episodes, Agents of Shield, the show has just been sucking monkey nuts. Um, they are they, we're finally being uh, graced with pictures from the Deadpool set. Uh, they're uh, filming, I want to say North Carolina. I forgot. They're filming somewhere down south. Uh, no, no, no. It's it's up in Canada, actually. Oh, is it Canada? Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, we, we're finally getting the movie. It's not just teasers. I mean, they're actually filming it. Uh, they have Ryan Reynolds in his fucking, uh, you know, the, the, the comic accurate suit. Um, I think the coolest thing, like in that picture that they had released where it was Ryan Reynolds laying on the bare rug, you can see that his eyes are expressive. One eye is kind of like a little more closed than the other. It's not like some stiff mask. It's it's supposed to express with his face. Um, and when you see for these pictures, um, they ha- he has the little like motion capture dots around the eyes of the mask. So like I guess those parts can actually come off, so he can see, so he doesn't have to look through the through the white part. Um, you know, so in case he has to run and jump and you know not hit hit a wall while he's running and jumping. Um, and then later on they could go into the computer and put expressive eyes into the fucking character, which is brilliant. Um, you know, uh, I'm glad that it's not just some static mask that doesn't move at all. Um, you know, so, I mean, it looks fucking cool. Um, and once again, this is something I'd said on my Facebook page, you know, if they don't try to sneak in one green lantern joke, you know, part, you know, part of the, part of the, the gist of, of Deadpool is that, you know, he makes fun of comic book, uh, stereotypes, comic book tropes. He, he kind of violates, you know, he violates the fourth wall where he talks to the audience and, you know, he understands that he's living in a comic book world and he's not really real. Um, you know, and especially the fact that it's being played by Ryan Reynolds, you know, hopefully, and I mean, that'd be great if there's a, x-men wolverines x-men origins wolverine joke too but you know i think more notoriously the gigantic flop that was green lantern and ryan reynolds hopefully you know something like that will make it into the movie hopefully there aren't people that aren't too butthurt and there isn't like people scared of they're all butthurt being all like i hope they're not worried about being sued i mean i would love for them to do a, a green lantern joke you know just something something give us something you know, you know, give name two of the characters, Hal and Jordan or something. Give, you know, I don't know. So uh, and then also uh, there are sort of uh, there, there are pictures out there now. And it's not it, it, Jared Leader, Jared, Jared, Jared Leader, Jared Leto, who is going to be playing the Joker in the, the Suicide Squad movie. Um, he's not a makeup or anything like that, but uh, he has there's a picture of him holding a camera up to his eye sideways which is very reminiscent of the cover for uh, Batman the Killing Joke, which the character, the Joker, is on the cover of that magazine holding the camera sideways up to his face. Um, so he's having a little fun with it. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm still not a fan of that whole casting idea of having Jared Leto. I don't, I don't like that pretty motherfucker. Um, he's done plenty of... He's been in some good movies. So that's, that's, that's what makes me even more angry that you know he's, he, he's pretty. He's been in good movies. Uh, he's in a rock band. Uh, he probably gets more pussy than I'll, even, <laughs> you know, he gets more pussy than I could possibly imagine. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm totally hating on Jared Leto, uh, you know, and I don't want him to play the Joker, but I have to just shut up and take it. Um, hopefully it'll be a good movie. Uh, hopefully DC comics are, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll start, stop, start making good movies. Um, but he had, he had released some pictures of him kind of emulating what the Joker did on the cover of that comic book and that's pretty much everything i have on my list unless there's anything you want to add paul no that sounds about good okay so please visit two strangers one podcast.net we can find all things show related you can find links to our itunes uh page so that was authority dot net dot net i just want to make sure because i don't want to say dot com because i had gotten i had gotten an email from a website that is like oh we we can get you two strangers one podcast.com 
and you know, and then like I'm it's like five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, for, they want like one hundred and fifty dollars for it, and I'm like, well, fuck you, I'll stick with .dot net. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and, and then like you know, and it's very, it was just way too shady, way too shady. So uh, I'll stick with two streams one podcast dot net. Thank you very much. Um, where you can find all things so related. Uh, we are on iTunes. You can go to the iTunes store and search podcast two strangers one, one, two strangers one podcast where you see our beautiful red white and blue logo um if you're looking for the link for that you can find it on two strangers one podcast.net uh see so if you have iphone ipad ipod you can go back and actually jesus christ in a couple in, a, in about a week and a half this show will be three years old you could actually go back and see what the hell i was talking about three years ago um if you don't have an iphone ipad or ipod you can download us on the stitcher app that's s-t-i-t-c-h-e-r uh, the strap is for Android devices. I believe it's for iPhones also now. I mean, they, they've you know they've definitely expanded their their uh, and you could find all your favorite podcasts on Stitcher. I mean, Mark Maron's uh, Mark Maron, Adam Carolla, Chris Hardwick's The Nerdist, Kevin Smith's Modcast, and of course the Tsunami Faithful podcast. Paul's other baby. Uh, you could find them all on the Stitcher app. And what I like about Stitcher is that you can download the episodes while you're in a Wi-Fi spot. You know, if you're you know at a mcdonald's or starbucks or the public library or your own home and you can listen to the episodes later on while you're out and about you know if you're running errands you're riding your bike you're driving to work you can listen to us on the stitcher app uh so it doesn't interrupt your data so you don't have to fucking you know you don't i mean you could if you wanted to you can stream the episodes uh but if you want to download them in a wi-fi spot and listen to them later on uh and what's cool about the stitcher app is it doesn't it's not going to fill up your phone with a million fucking podcasts it only keeps the like six most current episodes and then you can listen to them later on, uh, which is what I do when I do when I drive down to New York City and I have a six hour drive ahead of me. I listen to my Stitcher app. Um, yeah, he listens to every single episode of the Chinami Faithful podcast. Absolutely. But if he doesn't, then I get to shoot him in the face. <laughs> and of course, if you listen to this show, you should be listening to the Tsunami Faithful podcast. Um, Damn straight. And uh, uh, so you threw me off there. You can follow uh-huh. us. You can follow <laughs> Follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash two strangers with my podcast. If you, of course, we want money. If you can give us money, that'd be fucking fantastic. But if you don't, if you can't give us money, the least you can do is share us on Facebook. Uh, you know, even if you share this particular episode, share the page. We've gotten a few more likes since the last episode. And I want to thank, once again, uh, I want to thank the people who are who are new to our page. And we're, we're slowly etching closer to 500. If we can get to 500, that'd be fucking fantastic. Um Take a drink. Uh, <laughs> find us on Facebook, Two Strangers One Podcast. We're on, alcohol. we're on Twitter at Stranger Podcast, the at the little at symbol Stranger mm-hmm. Podcast. And if you want to get in contact with us, you can contact us at, if you want to send us an email. You can send us at Two Strangers One Podcast, all spelled out uh, at gmail.com. That's Two Strangers One Podcast, all spelled out at gmail.com. And also while you're on Gmail or whatever the case may be, you can go on YouTube. Search for Two Strangers One Podcast, and you can see my little solo project. I get bored, and I kind of uh, the Stranger Vlog. I'm like up to like I want to say episode six. I think episode seven I haven't released yet, but it's just basically me in my car talking for about 15 minutes while I drive to work. Uh, it's sort of you know when I go off on a tangent. Well, this is it's a, a whole show of just tangents. So if you want to check that out, just go on YouTube and check search of course for. You do. Two strangers, one po- two strangers, one podcast, or Stranger Vlog. And of course, there was another guy that kind of used that name, but he only did one episode, so go fuck himself. Um, <laughs> you know, I've done that's seven cool. episodes now, so he could kiss my ass. Um, and that's about it. Ack, we asked the floor to you, sir. About time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so on Twitter, you can find me at Paul Piscirlo. My last name is spelled P E S C R I L O. <sighs> Since some of you have decided to. Sneak onto Chris's page and find me on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Paul mm-hmm. I won't add every single person because that's more of a private page for me. However, if I think that you'll behave yourself, I may add you. So there's always that. Uh, Instagram, instagram.com slash Paul Piscirillo. Put up some new pictures. One picture of my kid in front of some lines being like, eh, they're just sleeping behind me. What the fuck do I care? Mm-hmm. And some pictures of me and my woman, because, you know, she's beautiful, obviously, and everybody's jealous. Um, <laughs> and um, I have what's called an ask.fm. It's ask.fm slash Paul Piscirillo. Please ask me questions. I don't have a problem asking, answering tsunami questions, but I would like a little bit more, you know, hey, Paul, what do you think of this? Or, hey, Paul, what do you think of that kind of question? So, 
Yeah, anything. You're watching your favorite show, and you're like, hey, Paul, what do you think of, you know, Uncle Grandpa? <laughs> or, hey, Paul. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I don't have a problem with Uncle Grandpa, but then when you ask me about Teen Titans Go, you might want to just sit, you might want to just get some popcorn and sit there and be prepared to read, like, a whole book on why I hate Teen Titans Go and how I want to murder every single person on that show. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I don't know about the second part, but the first part, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, speaking of donating, and I hate to I hate to say this to people, but um, and I'm hoping Chris will do this at some point so, we, so I can get a Two Strangers, One Podcast shirt. Hint, hint, <laughs> hint, hint. Um, the Two Army Faithful Podcast actually has a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Two Army Faithful Podcast. Uh, at some point, we may follow suit with that as well just to help fund the podcast and whatnot. Uh, for two strangers, but if you guys, I know a couple of you have said that you actually listen to the other podcast, so if you guys want to uh, donate to that, it's uh, patreon.com slash Tommy Faithful Podcast. we got a couple perks. Hopefully, you know, some of you will come on and uh, help us out, so. Let's check it out, check it out. Uh, so, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening and had as much fun as we did recording. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Paul. Don't be a stranger. Peace. We're out. Bye. You should be fabby. And giving me more money. Two pictures of monkey nuts in a wet t-shirt. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, she has a Tsunami Faithful shirt, goddammit. Wet t-shirt concert. All right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double it? Jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris it's- Cologne? Smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. I broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. Him punny. But <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with oh, a materialist. I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure man. I didn't write this? <laughs> Uh, I, I smell sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in Lotto history. Much like the recent Powerball, both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. Uh, Christopher uh, Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. Is this? I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think it is? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show, I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be honest with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, And if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. That's, I understand that. I just wanted to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15, and a PDF file is only 5 bucks. Five dollars yeah. is insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard for a paperback version. No, this is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on, come! I, like I can it. see that trailer. 
Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm going to make that smelly joke. I know. You're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. (laughs) Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker. I and will his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. And you could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool. Fuck you, I'm out.